For the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Lord of all, to you we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And with your spirit. Today we hear once again in our readings the, the freedom we have to make choices, to make decisions, sometimes the good ones, sometimes wrong. But let's turn to the Lord and ask his forgiveness and healing for any of the decisions we've made as disciples that took us away from the path he wishes. I confess to Almighty, to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, Pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer dares not to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friends had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. But then he built a watchtower and hold out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crops of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing, break through its walls, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see bloodshed, for justice, but hark the outcry. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The sponsorial psalm, the vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A vine from Egypt you transplanted. You drove away the nations and planted it. It put forth its foliage to the sea. It shoots as far as the river. The vineyard, the vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Why have you broken down its walls so that every passerby plucks its fruits? The boar from the forest lays its waste and the beasts of the field feed upon it. The vineyard, the vineyard of, of the Lord, Lord is the house of Israel. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right had planted, the son of man whom yourself, yourself made strong. The, the vineyard, vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Israel. And we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life and we will call upon your name. O Lord, God of hosts, restore us. 
If your face shine upon us, then we shall be saved. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. Make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord, to go and bear fruit that will remain. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, you, Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, He sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, thinking, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in scriptures, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, The kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Do you believe the world is the way God wants it to be? Just think about that. Do you really believe the world is the way God wants it to be? My guess is that probably everyone would say, no, of course not. After all, we can look all around us to see reasons why, some close to home and some far away. We see struggles and pain in our own families God couldn't possibly want that. 
Every day we turn on our computers and find emails from crooks wanting to steal our identity or our bank accounts. We've received countless phone calls from people trying to scam us in one way or another. God couldn't want that. On TV, we see huge piles of garbage floating in the middle of the ocean and factories spewing poison into the air. Some animals going extinct right before our very eyes. God can't possibly want that. See some businesses taking advantage of vulnerable customers and more than a few elected officials stealing from the public coffers and even a handful of wealthy people trying to buy their kids way into college. God couldn't want any of that. And of course, there's always the big stuff. War, poverty, famine, oppression, murder. God certainly can't want those things. Absolutely not. Well, it seems pretty obvious that the world we're living in can't be the kind of world God envisioned when he created it. So now, now let me ask you a different question. Is the world the way you would like it to be? I bet you came up with the same answer as before. No, of course not. But if we all believe that the world isn't the way we want it to be, then why isn't the world different? Why doesn't the world look more like the world we want, the world we hope for, the world we dream about? So, if God and us all want the world to be a certain way, shouldn't that have already happened? Shouldn't the world be like the Garden of Eden? perfect in every way. We need to realize that whatever is wrong with the world is not because God's not doing his part, but because we're not doing our part. Not because God's failed in some way, but because we have. I'm not even sure that God and us both want the world to look the same way. Oh, we say we do. We're good at that. We say that we want a beautiful world filled with love and kindness and generosity and forgiveness and mercy and justice, just like God does. But we sure don't seem to live that way, at least not in the ways that will bring about the beautiful world God wants. So our choices, our decisions, and our sin gets us exactly what we truly want, deep down inside a world in which we get to do whatever we want, whenever we want, and however we want. We get to hold on to our grudges, refusing to forgive. We get to buy, acquire, and use things in whatever way works best for us, even if these things could cause harm to others. We get to dislike and distrust others who may be different from us. We get to compete for everything without having to worry about those on the losing side. We get to chase our main goal, success in the eyes of others. We even get to use others, our family, our friends, co-workers, loving them when it suits our needs, then cutting them loose when we don't need them anymore. Yes, we may say we want the same world God wants, but our actions don't back that up. It looks more like, from our actions, we want a world in which we are entitled to whatever we want, and others aren't. The world is ours. We're the ones in charge. We don't know anybody anything. In today's readings, the two things seem to come across loud and clear. One, God provides everything we need. Remember the hedge, the wine press, and the tower? And two, God is the landowner, the one in charge, the one to whom the yield is due. You know, sometimes we live as if God really isn't doing his part. 
He isn't providing us everything we need. Sometimes we like to blame God for our lives not turning out the way we'd hoped. We even blame him for the bad stuff that happens in the world. Well, God let it happen. He could have stopped it. It's like we think God has to change for the world to be a better place instead of us changing. Put simply, it's easy to do nothing when we think everything is God's problem or God's fault and not ours for sure. At the heart of Christianity lies the pure graciousness of God, an incredible God who gives us everything we need, pouring out his grace and blessing just because he loves us. And he continues to do this every day, every hour, every second. And when we take everything God provides and tends his vineyard faithfully, beautiful things will happen, beautiful fruit, will come. A beautiful world will become more visible. Little by little, through every act of love, however great or small, we will start to see a better world. So, let's stop waiting for God to make it happen from the outside, but rather make it happen through the inside, through us, through our hearts open to his grace. Making our world a better place isn't God's job, it's ours. So, let's do our job today, tomorrow, and every day to come. Let's join together now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. St. Paul tells us that by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, we should make our requests known to God, and so we now have the courage to do so. For the church, that we may be made worthy of producing good fruit to build up the kingdom of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those living in regions of the world marked by ongoing hostilities and resentments, that they may find in their hearts a way to reconciliation, acceptance, and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That we may foster and encourage a true and lasting respect for all human life, especially for the most vulnerable and those at the peripheries, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who harvest in the fields and on farms, in orchards and vineyards, that they may be paid a just wage and treated humanely, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, that we may work together to bear fruit that helps our neighbor materially and spiritually, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, 
for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, you have entrusted us with this fruitful planet and your grace to continue the task of building up your kingdom. Provide us with the tools we need to make this world wonderful in your eyes. Hear this and all our prayers through your Son and our Lord, Jesus Christ. My soul rejoices in my God. My spirit proclaims the greatness of the Lord. Holy is his name. He has looked upon his servant in her lowliness. Every age to Come, shall call me blessed. God, who is mighty, has done great things. His mercy is from age to age. My soul rejoices in my God. My spirit proclaims the greatness of the Lord. Holy is his name. Holy is his name. Please pray that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord mm -hmm. accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all this holy church. Lord, accept the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Jesus our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty. May our voices join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fount of all holiness. Make holy these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Anthony our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we too be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. And now at our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be, be your name. name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with each one of you. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul will be healed. The love we have for you, O oh Lord, is only a shadow of your love for us. Only a shadow of your love for us your deep abiding love. The bread we take and eat, O oh Lord, is your body broken and shared with us. 
your body broken and shared with us the gift of your great love. Our lives are in your hands. Our lives are in your hands. Our love for you will grow, O oh Lord. Your light in us will shine. Our own belief in you, O oh Lord, is only a shadow of your faith in us. Only a shadow of your faith in us, your deep and lasting faith. The dreams we share today, O oh Lord, are only a shadow of your dreams for us. Only a shadow of your dreams for us, if we but follow you. Our lives are in your hands, our lives are in your hands. Our love for you will grow, O oh Lord, your light in us will shine. The joy we share today, O oh Lord, is only a shadow of your joys for us. Only a shadow of your joys for us when we meet face to face. Our lives are in your hands. Our lives are in your hands. Our love for you will grow, O oh Lord. Your light in us will shine. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant us that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to be God. To God. Sent forth by God's blessing, our true faith confessing, the people of God from his dwelling take leave. God's sacrifice ended, oh, now be extended. The fruits of this Mass in all hearts who believe. The seeds of Christ's teaching are in souls reaching, shall blossom in action for God and for all. His grace shall inside us his love shall unite us to further God's kingdom and answer his call.